So welcome. Uh, today we're talking with Robert Valley, who was the animation director on the new documentary Belushi, which uh, launches this weekend on Sunday on Showtime. And uh, so Robert, thank you so much for uh, taking part in this. Um, it's good to see you again, Amit. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. um, so Robert Valley, uh, uh, one of the uh, great directors and designers in animation today. And as I should mention, you're also Oscar nominated for uh, Parasiter and Cigarettes, your amazing uh, personal short film. So, um, so yeah. Well, you had a little part to do in, uh, with that in terms of the rollout strategy that we had. <laughs> you, you say that, I, I'm not, I'm never sure what I exactly did, but, but I'm, uh, I'm really grateful that you think I did something. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, talking about this Belushi thing, so there, uh, there's something about Belushi where, you know, he kind of followed the path of an industry comedian, of a mainstream comedian, but, but also he comes off as a bit of an outlaw because he didn't do things as, as he was exactly supposed to do them always. And it, I, I found that it was really interesting that uh, you directed the project because I, I sometimes feel a little bit... Uh, the same way about you, like, like there's, you know, you're working the industry, but you also don't play by the industry's rules all the time, you know, and, and you kind of, there's an, kind of an element of, of uh, danger to your work. And I'm curious if, if you yourself found any kind of a, uh, not a spiritual connection, but, but did you find any kind of a, uh, you know, did you identify with Belushi uh, when, when you were approached to do the project? Well, I'd say definitely. You know, what's funny is um, uh, during the course of working on that project and afterwards, uh, people would say, oh, what are you working on? I said, oh, I'm just working on, you know, documentary about John Belushi. And you'd be surprised how many people never heard of John Belushi before. Really? Yeah, uh, I was pretty shocked because when I was growing up, I mean, I'm 69, I was born. I remember seeing Animal House in the movie theater. <laughs> and uh, of course, I saw the Blues Brothers and you know, we were watching Saturday Night Live every weekend on Saturday nights. And uh, yeah, John Belushi was everywhere, you know. And I think uh, I, I definitely related. I mean, it was just fun to, to, to do something about that, that old original cast from Saturday Night Live. Because that was, that was kind of a, a, a really, you know, special group of uh, people, you know. So, um, so that was fun. Any of the people that worked on this project, you know, me and Daryl and Andy and Eleonora, we, you know, we all were kind of uh, fans of Saturday Night Live and Belushi. So it's always nice to work on something if you, if you kind of um, appreciate where it's coming from, you know. Were you, were you more of a SCTV kind of guy or were you a Belushi guy growing up? Because I know you're a Canadian. What, what, yeah, did you, did you I watched preference? SCTV. Yeah. yeah. I was watching some SCTV the other day, but just came up, in, you know, on YouTube and it's a little off, that stuff. <laughs> the humor is a little off. Yeah. But it's funny. I mean, uh, I didn't realize it, but uh, some of those people from SCTV and the SCTV, SCTV guys were all sort of coming out of the Second City, you know, um, improv, right? I guess some of yeah. them went to New York and the other ones went to, was it like Edmonton? I keep thinking it might be Toronto, but I think SCTV was, was done in Edmonton. Really? Wow. That's what I heard. I'll have to Google that. <laughs> See if it's accurate or not. So, so tell me, how were you approached to do the Belushi project? Was it just one of the things that comes along or did the director, uh, RJ Cutler, did he specifically ask for you? Or was there a process where they whittled it down from different directors and, and ended up with you? No, it wasn't like that at all. I was, uh, I was in London. Uh, we just finished the Zima Blue um, short for the anthology 
Love, Death, and Robots. And I, we, I literally just finished doing the sound mix and it was sort of done. And I, I was gathering up my, my, uh, my luggage and saying my goodbyes to the people at the studio. And on the way out, I got called into uh, John Batsik's office. He was the executive producer on it. And they were having a meeting in there. And they literally said, oh, Robert, before you go to the airport, can we just have a word with you in John's office? So I, I went in there. And then they sort of said, look, we got this documentary we're working on about John Belushi. And I was kind of, kind of hooked in with that. Because I'm kind of trying to uh, move more towards documentary uh, in terms of um, the animation direction that I want to go in. So yeah, it was a documentary. It's about John Belushi, and um, they didn't really have to sell it more than that. <laughs> really, that was about it. And so I basically uh, left about ten minutes later and flew back home. And uh, like with with most job with with most jobs, it takes a while to get started. So it probably took well, about a month or so, and then we uh started storyboarding uh, i think rj had some sequences that he knew he wanted animated and there's actually a lot more animated sequences in there, there we had uh originally we had storyboarded some you know the first time uh john meets uh uh dan Aykroyd. Uh, Dan Aykroyd climbed up the fire escape in this hotel and sort of uh, entered the room through the fire escape. <laughs> That's how they met. <laughs> oh, that would have been awesome. And then there's this other sequence with uh, John Belushi and Gilda Radner, you know, and I mean, that would have been fun. But the way the documentary went, we, we kind of ended up uh, focusing more uh, on John's backstory uh, like his childhood, his relationship with his father, and other things like that. So, uh, speaking of that, in the documentary, it's constantly switching to a young John Belushi. Even in the sequences where he's an adult, you kind of, it, it kind of, he transforms into the young Belushi. And and that choice, where did that come from? Was that something that was in the boards, or uh, not not in the boards, but was that something that the director wanted, or was that something that you, you decided to do? No, no, that was RJ. Okay. I think uh, RJ, you know, he he kind of had an angle on that story that he wanted to tell. Because, I mean, those of us that uh, uh, know John Belushi pretty much are familiar with the story. You know his rise. You know his troubles with uh, drugs. Uh, and then he died in, in that... Uh, uh, in that hotel in, in LA, Hotel Miramont, yeah. I guess the name of it. Ch Chateau Marmont, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, you kind of know the, like, the basic story, right? But I think RJ wanted to sort of dig a little deeper and, and sort of tell a different story. And I, I guess uh, it kind of had to do with, you know, the son of an immigrant uh, coming to the States this kind of, uh, kind of a troubled relationship he had with his father. And I guess it was just sort of like this, uh, this youth, you know, this, this young John Belushi, which, you know, was kind of a, kind of a, you know, a scarred child, you know, that kind of, uh, kind of hid that, but it, there was still sort of aspects of that that kept coming up over the course of his life, you know, which might have explained some of his kind of antics and his crazy behavior and this sort of stuff. So, I mean, I think that's the that's the angle RJ wanted to sort of approach it from. Yeah, it was a nice touch. I, I liked that. Um, you mentioned that you're trying to get more into documentary work, and, and I'm curious what what is uh, causing you to kind of think that way. I, I know you know Parasiter was autobiographical. But do you find yourself more comfortable uh, doing fictional stuff or, or do, do you find uh, 
that, that you know, it forces you to kind of dig deeper when you're doing documentary work? Like what, what's causing you to go, I, I want to do more documentary work? Or is it simply the work is more interesting to you? Oh, no, that's it. It's just more interesting, you know. Than, than fictional work. Yeah, okay. totally. I mean, uh, the whole process of working on Belushi was fun. I, I had this hard drive, you know, that RJ gave me. It was just full of... Um, photographs uh, from um, from John Belushi's wife, Judy. You know, all these old photographs. It was all categorized into folders. And, and there's just so much stuff to look at. And, you know, that had all these old clips that I've never seen before of, you know, uh, really old uh, John Belushi's uh, kind of routines before Saturday Night Live. And... Um, you know, a lot of other stuff that you could probably find on YouTube, but I kept, you know, going through that, that, um, archive of reference material and, you know, sort of, uh, yeah, it was fun. I'm kind of, I'm looking around these days, uh, at documentaries. I, I saw a ZZ Top documentary that had animation in it the other day, and I'm getting a, a more calls for work about documentary work that are it's using animation to sort of fill in some of the some of the empty pieces where they don't really have any any you know photos or video or something so you know especially if it's going to be visualizing um certain parts uh of the story like uh remember that montage of heck documentary oh yeah that was yeah. good right that animated sequence in there Oh yeah. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a dot animation and documentary. It's, it's everywhere nowadays, but seeing it done well, like uh, in this Belushi documentary or in montage of heck, that's, that's kind of rare. And, and that's why I think this is special. It's uh, this, this felt like it really added to the story that was being told. And, uh, and I think, you know, a lot of that just has to do with, with your approach as, as a director. Um, I'm curious uh, when you designed Belushi, did you have, uh, did you go through a process with uh, RJ where you sent him designs or did you just, or did you kind of hit on one design and you submitted that and, and he, he was okay with it? Or was there, was there a process of refinement in terms of the character design of, of Belushi? Um, <laughs> well, yeah. Can I share my desktop? Yeah, yeah. I think I've got my, uh, I think I got my Belushi folder here, but I, um, let me see if it's here. Belushi, there it is right here. So, um, I, I did like, uh, some early drawings. Well, this is the first thing I did right here. So you can see this here. Yeah. Okay, well, this is the, that's the first thing I did. Actually, I, I think I did that before. Well, I don't know when I did that, but th this is kind of the first John Belushi thing I did here. And I was kind of doing some photo bashing with this, you know, sort of uh, taking some photographs of his eyes. Yeah, to get yeah. Kind of expressions and then sort of drawing the rest of it. He's got these Marlon Brando eyes, I noticed. And, uh, you're right. Kind of, you know, these Marlon Brando. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've never noticed that. Yeah, he's totally got it, man. I mean, this whole thing forms a shape. It's just like, uh, the eyebrows connect with, you know, the, the eye here to make one complete shape, right? So that was the beginning of it. And I tried to sell RJ on this idea of, um, doing, uh, Barry Kroger. All in favor. Oh yeah, watched Animal House a bunch of times. <laughs> I'm kind of doing like this photo bashing idea. Yeah. You know? And uh, cause given the amount of money that, I mean, documentaries never really have that much money, right? Sure. Um, but uh, the, uh, and then the amount of uh, minutes they wanted us to do. I, I think at the very beginning they wanted us to do like 20 minutes. Wow. And uh, I, I know how much animation that we could do uh, with me and, uh, and our crew of people. 
And 20 minutes seemed like a real stretch. And so, I mean, I, I, these are some of the kind of things I was doing here at the beginning. I was nice. sort of animating, taking like uh, stuff from Animal House and then animating it. And then, and then just sort of filling in the background. So it was, it was really quite a, you know, a photo bashing exercise here. But I thought it would have been cool because, you know, it's, it felt more authentic actually using, um, you know, images of, of John Belushi and then kind of animating them, you know. So uh, I think RJ wasn't really crazy about that idea. And I think he was kind of pushing for a more fully animated type of look. And so I kind of went in uh, a little uh, reluctantly. Not, not that I didn't want to do it, but I was just, I was a little worried about the amount of work that, um, that we were going to have to do. So. Um, well, I noticed you had a very small animation crew on the film. I mean, how, were you doing any of the animation yourself or, or was it just, I think there were like three people in the credits who did the animation? Yeah, I mean, th this is the crew that I've been working with for the, f uh, for the last few years. Um, you know, uh, where we kind of took that look from pear cider and cigarettes and um, which was sort of like fully, fully rendered artwork that has shading in it that, that, that uh, we're trying to figure out how to animate that basically, right? So, uh, let's see this little clip right here. We got this little thing. Uh, those are just backgrounds. But, you know, uh, so uh, I got my go-to guy, Daryl, who lives in Toronto, Daryl Graham, and Andy, uh, Andy McPherson, who's in Wales. And then there's Eleonora Cuero. Is that right? Eleonora. Let me just make sure I got her last name right. Cuero. And Eleonora Querio. And she, uh, she works in London. And, you know, the three of us did that whole thing. Um, and I was sort of just doing the, the layouts for each sequence. And then I would just give a whole sequence to, to one to Daryl and then one to Andy. And they were basically just, you know, had a whole sequence. Sometimes it was a minute, minute long sequence that they would, take on and do themselves, right? Yeah, yeah. So that worked out pretty good, you know, because they were kind of competing with each other a little bit. Had a nice little healthy composite competition going on. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good on a production. No, it was good. It was a very friendly kind of competition too, right? Yeah, so it worked out good. But yeah, those guys are, uh, you know, I've been working with those guys for a while. Uh, I'm, I'm curious about your production. Uh, you, I know you use After Effects a lot. Were you using After Effects on this project as well? Um, yes. Uh, Johnny Still, the compositor, was using After Effects. Okay. And that was great because, you know, I had some... Because uh, I do all the layouts in Photoshop and then... Mm -hmm uh basically you know that goes into tv tv paint and gets animated okay so you were using tv paint there as well yeah okay. yeah they can take my my layouts and then they they you know uh basically uh import that into tv paint and but you know the compositor can take all the animation renders and use all the settings that i'm using in photoshop like the you know the modes and all the different layer combinations that I used to get like some of the color uh, coloring effects and it just imports directly like that into After Effects so that worked out really good. But for Pear Cider you were using you were going straight from Photoshop to After Effects or did you, did you get a different pipeline for that? No that was just me so I just okay. I animated everything in Photoshop. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah yeah yeah. And, uh, I mean, I'm kind of comfortable working in that program, but 
once the once the crew started to grow and other people started to get involved um i didn't really want to force people to to animate in photoshop the way i was doing it you know it's uh but you know people were kind of comfortable using different software so we just ended up doing it like that but it's worked out good because we're getting the same uh look the same effects using you know better animation software i'm curious um I'm always curious when people, after they get nominated for an Oscar, everyone's experience is different. But for you, what, what happened? Did you notice that after you were nominated, did you start getting more offers or higher prestige offers? Or did, did you, how did you notice uh, the approach that people had to you? Or was it kind of the same? No, I mean, there was a wave of people uh, inviting me into their studios uh, for meetings. And it was kind of, I don't think anybody wanted anything more out of it than just inviting you over, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, you know, they'd say the things like, oh, your film is great, we should do something together and all this sort of stuff, but it never really amounted to anything, you know? So I was kind of hoping that would open up the door to people offering me money to do more of my own content, but it opened up the door to people wanting me to work on their projects, you know, right. uh, which is fine. I mean, I don't, I don't always want to work on my own stuff all the time. So, um, but, uh, yeah. I suppose the original question, it was, I, I was just curious what kind of an experience you had, whether it changed the kind of offers you were getting from uh, studios or, or yeah. whether everything kind of stayed the same because Pear Cider is a very, like it's a short film, but it's, it's almost a feature. I mean, I mean, in terms of pacing and in terms of the cinematic qualities, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's yeah, I, I, I would see that and I would go, this, this guy should be directing a feature, you know, you don't always say that for most people who direct shorts, you know, but, but you, you know, I, I thought the natural progression would you be getting feature directing opportunities. You know what, I was hoping that that would open more opportunity, even to pitch more stuff. Yeah, but it, it didn't really. Um, Right after, you know, the, there's a bunch, there's quite a bit of press, you know, a lot of interviews. And then as soon as the Academy Awards are over, it just sort of starts to taper off, right? And I had like about a half a dozen job offers on the table, various, you know, things. And one by one, they all started to fall away. And the last one on the table was that Love, Death and Robots project. And so I, you know, the way I felt, I had spent the better part of three and a half years self, um, you know, kind of, well, I was sort of self-financing it. You know, I, I, I was, I wasn't really doing other work. So I was sort of sacrificing a lot of, uh, you know, employment in order to finish this film. And as a result, you know, my income was uh, like, it was pretty small for like three and a half years. But I, I wanted that to, to sort of amount to something like, like I wanted all that time to help get me to that next level financially and creatively. And, uh, when that, all those jobs started to fall away, <laughs> the last one on the table was that love, death, and robots. I really wanted that job, you know what I mean? So... Uh, you, want, you want something for all that effort, yeah. I needed, to, I needed to demonstrate to my wife that it wasn't a complete waste of time. Because she kept looking at me and she would say, why do you keep working on that film? It's not going to do anything. Why don't you get a regular job? And I was like, no, no, it's good. It's an investment. <laughs> but I wasn't sure, right? So, yeah, so that that was my lifeline, that love, death, and robots thing. And uh, and then that turned into the Belushi job, you know, that was right after. And now I'm doing another love, death, and robots for the next season. 
So each one of these projects takes almost a year to do, 11 months or 12 months. So it sounds about right. It's been about three years since Parasider came out. So you know what, actually, it, it did, things did change in, in, in a way that um, more, more uh, jobs are presenting themselves. And every job you do, if you do a good job, it leads to that next job, basically. So it's, it's sort of about building momentum, you know, and also the other part of it is, is finally getting that crew of people, you know, that, that I'm really clicking with right now. And um, so, yeah, it's going pretty good. Well, each, each project um, that I see from you kind of just reaffirms your uh, incredible talent and, and um, just, you know, reaffirms that also you're one of the most underrated talents in animation. I mean, you do, you do amazing work and, and each time you prove it with each new project, this Belushi documentary is again, uh, the animation works beautifully with, with the storytelling in the film. And, um, and I want to congratulate you on that because uh, it's a great piece of work. So um, Rob, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk with us today with Cartoon Brew. And yeah. uh, hopefully we're going to be talking uh, a lot more about your future projects as well. That's great. Hey man, I appreciate it. Thanks for taking yeah. some time out. Yeah. No problem. No Good problem. to see you again. Okay. Take care, Rob. Okay. Stay safe. All right. Okay. I'll talk to you soon.